by Dr. Lisa Ackerley, food hygiene consultant, who will be casting her eye over what we find and is full of phrases to make you shiver. You couldn't try to poison someone any better. Obviously, E. coli, we shouldn't have any on a cloth. If E. coli 0157 had been on that cloth, then you only need 10 of those bacteria to make you ill. And we've got 1.2 million of these general E. coli. <laughs> I don't need to know what the result is, I can guess. <laughs> says the total aerobic plate count is 14 billion. Is that bad? That is high, yeah. What, what does that mean, aerobic plate? Well, it's, uh, that is the amount of bacteria and yeasts and everything that they've picked up. That's right. per gram of the sponge, so that is really high. As high as what? Well, you might find that sort of level in faeces, in poo. You what? see that? Oh, what is that? Is that well, chocolate? No, that looks suspiciously like rat poo. Uh, is that what it looks like? It does. In some local authorities, just that picture alone would be enough for them to close the premises down. <laughs> I've seen it all now. I can't believe I've seen that. Ooh. I think it's absolutely disgusting. And I've seen a lot of food premises. Having seen also the results from the, from the tea towel, the, uh, the lack of attention to, to so many food safety factors, I would be really seriously concerned about these premises. Um, and I think there are lots of potentially hazardous activities going on in there. They've got cross-contamination, they've got poor personal hygiene, they've got food that's been left out of refrigeration. I mean, you put all those together in, in a filthy premises where nobody cares and you, you've got a, a food poisoning outbreak waiting to happen. You know, really, we should all all expect a minimum standard, whatever the size of premises and whatever they charge for their food, the legislation applies to everybody. The environmental health officer who later advised Barr found this odd due to the risk of cross-contamination. It's surprising that they made that decision to distinguish between cooked meat products uh, and cooked meats themselves, and the risk of contamination would be the same for both. Why? Because once a product has been cooked, it's um, then potentially going to be eaten without further processing or cooking. And that means that if any contamination has occurred, then the public could be at risk. Dr. Lisa Ackerley and Graham Murphy are married, so it was no trouble disguising them as just another happy couple on holiday. This unit's been totally overloaded by food, and this bit here isn't refrigerated, because the refrigeration only comes up to about here. So this is all nice and warm and open to contamination, so that's much more of a risk. So we might have some egg white, uncooked egg white in here. It's piled high, so the top bit's not under refrigeration, really. It's fairly typical of a, of a kitchen in, in a home, and probably the problems are probably similar in most people's homes. OK, well, the first thing is always put the raw food in at the bottom and try to make sure that it's in a container that stops the drips coming through. Second, put the cooked foods at the top. Always defrost food in the fridge in a proper container like that or a casserole dish with a cover on it. And wash your hands after handling anything like these raw foods because they may actually, um, the bacteria may actually get on your hands. Well, E. coli is a, is a fecal indicator which could come from raw chicken or raw meat. Um, so obviously you don't want that on a cloth being spread around the kitchen. We've actually found that there are other places in the home which we call hygiene hotspots, if you like, and that's where we found bacteria lurking in quite large quantities. Where are they? Chopping boards are particularly bad, the kitchen cloth, um, taps, kettle handles, oh my so all sorts of places that perhaps you wouldn't think to clean. What sort of products can we use then? Well, if you use an antibacterial hand wash, that, that really gives you a sort of feeling of security, but also in the hygiene hotspots, using an antibacterial cleanser just gets rid of the bacteria. So something like Dettol, it's a very quick squirt on the taps, and then, and then you know that you've killed the bacteria.